high expected to take. So, Pickle was also very sad. I think coming to academia. Not sad. I was trying to convince him that academia was actually a good career choice. <laughs> 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 you can see that didn't work. Yeah, no. I know. A lot of people have. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe if I don't hear him die a sudden death, then maybe we maybe we we'll get him back. I don't see that happening. So. But one, so one last thing I say before we open this up to questions is I think you know, since those days, LLVM really has been Chris's baby. It's become, it's gone from what was a research infrastructure to something that's commercial quality and, and something that's really robust, user-friendly, well-documented, all the things that you need to work well in the real world. And he really drove that. I don't think, um, we, I've had other students who've done interesting research and built interesting software, and believe me, that software is nowhere near where LLVM is today. And a lot of that credit was so I, I, I would say that I've been more of a shepherd than doing it all. Yes. All the yeah. guys have been doing it. But but having the patience and the the vision and the and the determination to make it happen is what makes it happen in the end. So anyway, see anything more to say? Does anyone have any questions? But other people have their own perspective and tidbits and what happened. Uh, that's due to our orange friend right here. Thank you. 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 And it had nothing to do with the LVM, but it was a good place to work at a college. And a friend of mine named Louis Grabarg at Apple came to me one night while we were watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer and said, there's this cool thing, you have to work on it with me this weekend. I'm like, what is it? He's like, it's called LVM, and we need to port it to OS X. So we did. We, uh, on a Saturday, Sunday, we you know did all the make file hacks converted everything over to OS X that needed to be converted. I was like, hmm, OS X doesn't run on Spark. Uh, so we needed, a power <laughs> we, needed, we needed a power PC backend. And so we wrote one of those with a lot of help from Chris over email. And Chris was like, all right, so you're going to give it back, right? And I was like, I have to get it past the lawyers. You may notice a recurring theme of lawyers. <laughs> and so. Over the course of three or four months, I walked through the process with Apple's lawyers and went through hundreds of patents, convincing them that it didn't infringe on any of them and that we weren't going to give away our valuable intellectual property. And eventually, I got the sign-off from my VP to say, hey, you can go work on this on your spare time and release it into the wild. And so that sort of got LLVM on the Mac. On the Mac, and uh, let's see. Then I guess about six months later, uh, some people from Developer Tools came to me and said, "Hey, have you heard of this Chris Latner guy?" And I was like, "Yeah, he rules." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "Well, we're interested in doing some LVM-based stuff." And I'm like, "If you're going to do LVM-based stuff, you need to hire Chris." And they're like, "We'll get on that." So and they did, and that sort of got official corporate sponsorship for an LVM stuff. I remember Chris was already cooking. In 2003, I was hired by Apple, yeah. developer tools people, to look at all the uh, <laughs> it was a promising direction. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's a little raw now, but it looks promising. <laughs> so, so, so what are you doing now as a consultant? Hmm? What are you doing now as a consultant yes. in those days? Yes. Because okay. we had a phone call. Yep. Um, where you asked us a bunch of questions about it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should get yeah, out of here. It's assigned over to the next thing, it's 9 o'clock. So. Okay.